Hi, it's Neil Schneider from Meant to Be Seen. Today we're joined by Next3D. With me is, is Dave Cole and DJ Roller, co-founders of Next3D. Welcome to the program. It's good to, to, to meet you both at a Game Developers Conference. Thank you. Thank you. You've been enjoying the Thanks show, I take it? Absolutely. Well, I've, we've actually been in touch for, for a number of months about Next3D. And before we talk about your company, I'd like to learn a bit about yourselves personally. Uh, DJ, you have a, a filmography background, a cinematography background before next year. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, yeah, my, my background is a, a filmmaker and producer and, and working in 3D films for, for a number of years now. So um, uh, I, have, I have another company that uh, uh, has built uh, camera technology that we use, but um, we've also been, you know, as I said, filming for a number of years on different projects, various projects that have been out there and worked on. Uh, um, some of the films we've made, U2 3D was, was a film I worked on, uh, Drain to the Center of the Earth. Uh, there's an IMAX film out right now called Wild Ocean. It's in theaters um, all around 3D. So when you say work on the film, can you give an example of the type of uh, I, I, The films um, that we do, we, we produce and also work as cinematographers. So the films I just mentioned, I worked in a cinematography role, you know, behind the camera, um, filming on those. But, uh, but my company, uh, Liquid Pictures, that that does this project also produces. So we're in the middle of producing uh, several projects right now. And uh, X3D really is, is, is kind of a start of, of us trying to figure out ways to get it to the home and not just to the theater or after the theater to wait for it to get to consumers at home. So what I'm gathering is even before Next3D, you had a personal interest in stereoscopic 3D movies. Very much. Very yeah. good. And, and Dave, I, I understand you have a, a, a long history with, with 3D as well. I, I do, a long and storied past in, in stereo. I built one of the first uh, shutter glass products for the PC that was sold through retail, a product called Cyber Shades, about boy, almost 15 years ago, I guess. Uh, and then I've also uh, developed head mounted displays. HMD is really very high end, HMD, so mostly on the display side and the technology side. And then maybe most appropriate uh, to Next 3D. I developed a ride controller system for virtual reality uh, rides that was MPEG-2 based, but dealt with some of the issues of stereoscopic compression and playback using relatively modest hardware that we're dealing with now in X3D. It's amazing that you both have this long, illustrious career in 3D, and then you, I, I take uh, it you joined forces. How did you guys get connected? I think that we're all in the same boat here. 3D is like diamonds on the cave floor, right? And we're trying to figure out how to pick them up. You know, we're sort of stumbling around. DJ and I sort of ran into each other in the cave and said, you know, together we might be able to get one of these diamonds. You know, you've got uh, this phenomenal uh, sort of uh, momentum towards stereo, towards what's going on in, in cinema. I might have a technology that'll help us get it, you know, that'll help it help us uh, get it into the home. Let's see if we can collaborate and, and make this happen. Okay, so now let's talk about next 3D. Now, I, I, I gather there's a big challenge when it comes to cinema in the home, which is establishing standards, finding a way to communicate to the televisions in a way that all the manufacturers will equally understand so the consumers can enjoy the 3D in the home. What is the solution that Next3D has to make to, to get around this problem? Um, so what, what we have developed is a compression technique, a method of encoding stereoscopic content and then decoding it at the consumer end that makes, um, that, that, that solves the particular, some, some challenges. It makes the movie small enough, you know, compresses it enough, that it can be distributed over, for instance, the internet. So you could download a movie and watch it. And then when it plays back, it can play back on relatively modest pieces of equipment, like an Xbox 360 or a Sony PS3. And so the challenge of making it small enough to send to a consumer over, you know, over a standard DSL connection is one big hurdle, and then the other one is, once you get it there, how do you play it? Does it take a $6,000 computer you know, video server to, 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 to work? And the answer is no, you can do it with an Xbox 360 or a Sony PS3. Now why is, why is it advantageous to work with an Xbox or a PS3? What sets that equipment apart versus another option? Well, from a technical perspective, the GPUs, the graphic processing units, we uh, optimize our compression technique to play back on devices that have modern GPUs, in particular the triangle, the, the triangle engine inside the GPU, our compression format expects that and works when, when, when that's available. So from a technical perspective, that's why it's important. From a commercial perspective, the most likely to box to be sitting in the living room hooked up to a 3D ready television is an Xbox 360 or a Sony PS3. So there are the platform, there are there's a big target around those platforms for us because they're there in the living room already. We anticipate that people will be doing other stereoscopic things with those boxes as well, like playing games. So, um, you know, we're yet another thing you can do in 3D, use 
using this box in your living room. Would it be fair to say that the more successful 3D, stereoscopic 3D is among gamers, the more likely cinema is going to be successful in the home? We don't know which one's the killer app yet, right? Some people think it's going to be stereo gaming on the consoles, and some, think, some, some of us think it might be movies, but it really doesn't matter. Our interests are completely aligned in, in giving the home consumer uh, the broadest stereoscopic experience we possibly can. And that has to include gaming and movies. So whether we're along on the we're along for the ride on the coattails and the gamers are going to sort of lead the way or it's the other way around and movies will lead the way and gaming will be, you know, yet another thing to do, we don't know. But um, but yes, I think you're exactly right that, that we both care um, very much about making that home audience aware that 3D is ready to happen right now. Yeah, the gaming community is very important to us and, and you know, gamers are already downloading movies when they're not playing a game, so it's, it seems like a natural, um, you know, natural place for people to get 3D content. It really does feel like that gaming devices are going to really drive 3D into the homes, and we're kind of starting to see some of that. Now, DJ, you're the cinematographer of the team, and the first thing, the first concern, or the first challenge I would think of with a technology like this is, what's the quality going to be like? I mean, you're taking a film from the cinema, and you're, you're having some type of means of converting it into a way that can be downloaded. Can you elaborate a little bit on the challenges you had to overcome and from a quality point of view, are you, ha are you happy with the results? I, I'm very happy with it and it's, you know, it's one of the things when, when we shoot a film, like an IMAX film, um, the only way we can show that to either, either to people or even friends and family for that matter is to go to a 3D IMAX theater, but there's not one in everyone's living room. So, um, you know, one of the things about 3D, and, and this may sound weird, is, is it's like trying to trying to capture an image that would allow anyone to watch it and feel what you felt when you saw it with your own eyes when you're shooting it. And 3D is a way to get that that much closer to it. Um, ju just like a film's made today and it gets tweaked and, 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 and the colors get adjusted and the, and the quality gets adjusted just right for say an IMAX projection or a Real D or a Dolby Theater projection, you know, things get tweaked before they go to a disc on a DVD, you know, for a home. So, what I like about the approach that we're taking on X3D is, is it's not just the codec that we're doing, but also the encoding process. So when we talk with other fellow filmmakers um, in Hollywood and studios and post-production facilities, it's, it's a way to take that content that they've all worked so hard on and get it into a space that, as one filmmaker to another, they're going to be happy with when it gets encoded and sent to the home. So I'm very happy with the, the picture quality. Um, and, and, uh, and I think there's a, there's a method to get it in a place that, that Hollywood's going to be comfortable with it as well. It, he's picky. We can't pull anything over on him. He will see <laughs> any glitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the media, how you're going to distribute it. So what, I'm, what am I looking at here? I think it, uh, this is the Xbox. Xbox 360. Okay, we've got the, the PlayStation 3. So you That's have right. It, you have it working on both these solutions? We certainly do. And, but I, I'm seeing a traditional Blu-ray right. player as well. Um, my understanding is yours is a software solution. Why do we have a Blu-ray on the thing? 